Hi everyone, welcome back to the microcontroller laboratory. Myself Chandrasekhar P, assistant professor, Department of Electronics Communication, ATMA College of Engineering. In this session, I am going to explain the program number 7 of the V2 curriculum of a microcontroller laboratory. In my last previous video, we have discussed, I have discussed about a basics of microcontroller and what are the execution steps that is to be followed during the lab and also architectures and the pin diagram of an, a microcontroller that is introductions to the microcontroller laboratory. So in this session I am going to explain how to write a code for a delay programs using an a serial port and on chip timer or counter. So first before going to start with the main program, first we will understand how to use the timers of 8051 microcontroller. So 8051 microcontroller has a 2 16 bit in built timers. Each one of timers can be individually programmed. 8051 microcontroller timers can either be configured as a timer to generate the time delay or as a counter to count the events that occurs outside the microcontroller. Both the timer and the counters are built it in a single device or a block. The 8051 timers has a three general functions. First one calculating the amount of time between the two events between two or more events, counting the events and generating then a baud rate for a serial put. So in this timer we have gotten a two types of a timers in a 8051 microcontroller. Timer 0 and timer 1 are the namely the two different types of a uh, two different types of an, a timers in 8051 microcontroller. Both of them can be used as a timers or an counter and both are in a 16 bit wide but the architecture of 8051 is an 8 bit so each 16 bit is axis as a two separate resistors of a low byte and a high byte. 8051 timer 0 and timers 1 shares in a two common special function resistors which are called as an T mode and an T con. So where these two special resistors are controlled by timer 0 and timer 1. So what is then? This is an a timer 0 you can see here and this is an a timer 1 and this is an time mode resistor. So what is this timer uh, timer 0 resistor of an 801 is of? It is an a 16 bit resistors and acts as an a low byte and a high byte. The low byte is refers to as an TL0 and the high byte is referred as an TH0. This these resistors can be accessed like an any other resistors. Whereas 8051 timer 1 resistors is also an a 16 bit resistors which is split into an 2 bytes which is refers to as TL1 and TH1. Hence the timer 0 and timer 1 are two common special function resistors namely time mod and time con. So we'll discuss these two special function resistors and we'll see how they can be controlled in an timer 0 and timer 1 in a next slide. So here 8051 timer mode which is called as an T mode it is an a timer mode resistor. 
this timer is used to set an a timer mode in a timer 0 and a timer 1 in this 8 bit timer mode registers 4 bits are set aside as a timer 0 and upper 4 bits are set as an a timer 1 for each timer the lower 2 bits are used to set the a timer mode while the remaining two upper bits are used to specify the operation of it for an each timer so similarly in a timer 0 if we are going to consider this m0 and m1 are considered as an uh, to set the mode of an timer 0 and whereas this two will control the functions of it similarly in a timer 1 also m1 and m2 of a timer 1 will set the timer 1 modes and whereas the gate and c slash t bar will be controlling the operation of it. So in the, the first one we will discuss what is this gate, what is the c bar t and what is m1 and m0. So here the both 4 bits that is timer 0 and timer 1 functionality of an, a gate and c bar t bar and m1 m2 remains the same. So whereas uh, the gate terminal or at the gate field this bit is used for an a choice this bit is used for what a choice of an a internal and a external control and the gate if i set to 1 if the gate is set to 1 we can start and stop the timer from the external source if the same field gate is become zero we do not need any external hardware to start and stop the timer and c bar t c bar slash t bar this bit decides whether timer is used as an time delay generator or an event delay uh, counter if the c bar t bar c slash t bar is equal to zero it is used as a timer if the same field is set to say set to be an one then it acts as an a counter so that's why c stand for counter and t bar stand for what timer means c slash t bar if it is equals to zero then it will be acts as an timer if the same field c slash t bar is set to be one then that timer will act like what counter and next two fields are called as an m1 and m0 fields these are the two bits of an each timer which are used to select the a mode of the timer that is going to be performed in 8051 four timer modes which are given as in a table if the m1 and m2 are set to 00, 0 then it is called as a mode 1 and this mode will have an 13 bit timer mode and where this 8 bit timer or a counters will be acts like an uh, pre scaling pre scalar and the mod 1 is an 0 1 that is m1 and m0 are 0 1 respectively then that timer will work as an a 16 bit timer so where the higher bits and the lower bits are be cascaded and here there is no pre scaling of an any data the mod 10 where m1 and m0 are 1 and 0 respectively then 8 bit auto reloaded mode will be activated so in this auto reloaded uh, reloaded mode uh, timer or a counter the higher bits or the higher bytes holds the value which is to be reloaded into an a lower bytes and this lower bytes uh, of an uh, timer each time it overflows the data and if I want to split up the timer means then I am going to set the mode to n3 which is an m1 and m2 are made to 1 1 respectively then so then the timer will act like what a split timer mode so you can see a small example so how to start the timer and how to stop it for the time delay if I am going to consider the timer uses the clock sources of the crystal frequency 
of the crystal attached to the 8051 so here the frequency of the timer will be an always 1 by 12th of the frequency of an external crystal which is attached so when the tr0 that is the tr0 means timer when the timer starts so if i want to start the timer of a zero timer then it has to set to 1 if tr is equal to 1 means it start counting the value at that particular point of time the timer flag which is called tf should be equal to 0 so when tr is equal to 0 when tr is equal to 0 so that is the time that is overflow of it then automatically the tf that is an a time flag will be set to be 1 so when the time flag is set to be 1 again it will be stop the execution or it will stop the counting or an accounting of the events so to overcome that i have given a small uh, diagram of it so this is an x tal oscillator which is called as an a crystal external crystal oscillator so this external crystal oscillator is going to whatever the frequency it is going to produce it will be divided by the 12 so when c bar t slash is equal to 0 means this when it is this field equals to 0 it acts like an a timer and that timer is given to an a and gate and meanwhile the tr is going to be set when tr is, is equal to 1 and this and gates gets activated and it loads the content of the th and tl so where this th will have holds in a two values that is two bytes and whereas the tl will holds in two bytes so where the two bytes means the single bytes will have an a four bit of n data which means that two bytes means it's an eight bit of a data whereas upper bit upper byte or an upper field will store an eight bit of a data and lower field will store an eight bit of data totally so that is when this overcomes or when the values gets overcomes or if it wants to start uh, reset at that particular point of time if it is gets overflow if the value gets overflow this tf which is called as an a timer flag will be equals to 1 so at that time what will happen again the timer will going to be stop and once again if i want to trigger on the timer the, the timer means i need to set the tr field that is an a timer starter field so here next comes with an 8051 timer count that is the timer controller which is called as a tcon register this is the second special function registers in a timer control register it is an 8 bit registers where each bit has an a special function each bits are functions of an a varied bits of an tcon registers are as follows whereas tf1 which is called as an a bit number 7 it is an a overflow flag for an a timer 1 it is an overflow flag for an a timer 1 and if the tf1 is equal to, that is tf1 is equal to 1 it sets when the timer rolls from an 1 to 0 if the tf1 is equal to 0 then it will clear the execution of the interrupt which is going to be served at the routine similarly tr1 which is an a sixth bit or in sixth field of the timer tcon register so which is called as a run control bit for a timer if the run control bit for a timer is, is equal to 1 then timer is going to be turn on if the run control bit field that is an tr is equal to 0 your timer is going to be off and next field that is the fifth field is tf which is called as an overflow flag for a timer 0 so as an tf which is as, as safe as an a tf that is same as an a tf1 next tr0 which is called run control bit so this is also an, a similar to an tr1 and ie1 which is called as an external interrupt one edge flag it is not related to the timer operation but it is an external interrupted if it is occur then that field is going to be set to be a 1 or an a 0 next it1 which is an external interrupt one single type control bit if it1 is equal to 1 this will be enable the external interrupt one to 
be an a triggered for the falling edge of the signal the same field is set to be an a zero then it is going to enable the low level signals on a external interrupt to generate an interrupt signal and the second field and that is the second field of the tcon is an ie0 where it is called external interrupt zero edge flag this also almost not an a part of the a timer operation and final that is the last the lowest bit of an a tcon is an at it0 which is called external interrupt zero signal type control bit same as an it1 next we'll see how to calculate an a delay or the calculation of an a delay in 8051 timer so here in the calculation of the delay we are going to consider the clock as an a source of the calculation so timer needs to be a a clock source and if the c bar t is equals to 0 then the crystal frequency attached to 8051 is an a source of the clock for the timer the value of the crystal frequency attached to the microcontroller device uh, uh, microcontroller decides the speed at which the timer ticks now suppose that the crystal frequency is an 11.059 megahertz then we calculate the timer clock frequency as 1 by 12th of it that is 1 by 12th of the 11.059 megahertz then the tf then the timer flag it will be an or an a frequency the timer clock frequency will be an 9,21,583 hertz that is 923.583 kilohertz and later we calculate the timer clock period so this timer clock period is generated or the delay is used by taking an a time delay of an one machine cycle is given which is used to generate an a delay that is whatever the timer frequency clock frequency we have been obtained we are going to divide the value by an 1 over 1 over the clock frequency that is 1 by 9,21,583 we are going to get around the period the timer clock period around 1.085 microseconds and later part for an delay of 10 seconds so first we need to divide the desired value of an a 10 millisecond by the timer clock period that means if i am suppose i am going to calculate for an a 10 millisecond means this 10 milliseconds has to be divided by 1.05 microsecond and when i divide that by 1.085 microsecond i am going to get an a value of 9216 and secondly the value what i am going to get the 9216 has to be subtracted from the maximum number of the count number of counts possible for an a 16 bit timer so what is the maximum number of count that is 2 to the power of 16 we that is nothing but 65536 we need to subtract the value what i have obtained in the first step for an a 10 millisecond by the the uh, 65536 suppose if i am going to take a 4 milliseconds for a duration means 4 millisecond divided by 1.085 and whatever the value i'm going to get this value has to be get subtracted from the this value so when that value has been subtracted later part i need to convert this value into an hexadecimal number and will write the numbers into an upper registers and an a lower register that is finally when i convert the 563020 to an hexa number so i'm going to get an dc00 where this dc00 will be stored in an a2 register <coughs> so this is then a calculations of an a timer that is an a delay calculation of an 8051 timer and next we'll see how to write the a program that is an assembly language language program to toggle the content of an a port 0 continuously <coughs> sorry using an a timer delay in between first thing we need to set whether it is an a timer or a counter so once it was decided whether it's a timer or a counter then we need to load the upper bits and the lower bytes by then a zero value and then we are going to start the timer by setting an a transition bits that is a time rise bit that is tr is equal to 
and will pull that tr flag till the does not it gets to n till it doesn't get uh, set so once it has been set it will execute the program and to stop the timer we are going to clear the tr x that is n tr is equal to 0 and we'll clear the timer flag and the steps will be continuously repeated for the delay that has to be occurred so to this i have written a some small program so where i am going to see the toggling of the numbers from an one port to another so this org means it's the origin of the program where i'm going to be started and later part suddenly i'm going to jump with the address location of an 80 uh, 8000 and i'm going to start the my fresh program with an 8000 so if you skip this also is nothing happen it will start from an that is it will start the programming from the origin of it so first i'm going to take the uh, how many values that has to be toggle or how many values that has to be used for the counting so here i'm going to use an r naught is equal to 10 times of it and will load that 10 value to the r naught and the 55 value to then a and i will assign that 55 value which is called as an a port value to n that is through then accumulator register a and i will call the a delay that is a call delay so when i call the delay program so this delay program will jump to the call to do the a delay and as in an algorithm it will sets the whether it's an a timer a counter or an a timer so later part it will set what is the value of an a lower bit and what is the value of an upper bit and it will set what is the tr is equal to if the over flag or the tf is uh, not equal to 1 then it jumps to 0 if it is an 1 then it clears and return to the main program so once it returns to the main program again the value a will be stored within 0a and those 0 a a value will get stored with the port 0 now this port 0 has to get toggle so again once again i am going to call the delay so when i call the delay again this part will be executed that is it will set the values and it will start the timer and it will set the bit so if the bit is equals to 0 that is jnv jump if bit not set so if the bit is not set to an 1 then it will be here if it is set to 0 means again it will clear the return and it will return to the main function to here so once it is returned to the main function again it will start whether it has to be the content of the r not what i have been taken to for an a toggling of an a 10 value is an 0 or not so how it is going to done if the r not is not equal to 0 then it is going to be go to again the step so again another execution so here how many times have been taken 0 a is nothing but it is a decimal it is called as an a 10 so it is going to toggle the 10 times it is going to toggle the 10 times so here how we are going to see how the delay is generated and this can be also done by another program by writing an a code for generation of an a square wave so once the square wave has been generated that is the delay has been calculated and will take the uh, on period and then off period that is uh, for, uh, you can take any of the time you, you required so in that you need to be uh, give the values for an tl and th value and at that particular point of time you are going to see the output of the square wave by the logic analyzer so you can use that program also for the uh, see the delay of the 8051 by using a timer and next is an we'll see how we are going to write an assembly level language program to generate an a square wave with the on time delay of an a 6 milli seconds and off time delay of an a 4 millisecond so that's what i said so the square wave this is then another example to generate an a delay so just you can go through it so here as i said that i am calling an a delay so once the delay is calling it will be moved here and it will set so this is what i said so here what i am done initially value is timer is 2 millisecond and i am moving the value of an 0 fh and i will start my timer so if the tf0 is then wait until the timer gets overflow if the timer doesn't get overflow it will repeat that so once it gets overflow it will be reset and it will return once again return to where return to the main program 
and here again this is the first delay so this delay has been over that is i have called the a 2 millisecond and again i will call the delay again i will call another duration of an 2 millisecond so how many to hour it is an a 2 milliseconds and 2 mill again i am going to call a one more so that is the port one has been done again i am going to initialize the generation on time delay through the p1 so when i again the on period will be an a 4 millisecond so 4 millisecond means how many times i need to be calculated i need to be calculated the four times because here i am going to that is here 1 milliseconds i am going to be that is i am going to call an 1 millisecond subroutine twice to get the 2 milli so this one this is for an 1 millisecond delay and 1 millisecond delay 2 millisecond delay that is off time and 1 millisecond 1 millisecond 1 millisecond 1 millisecond it is an a four times so hence the delay of an on time will be a 4 millisecond. So you can exercise this in a your lab. And finally, we have got an another program to write to the a serial port. So here I am going to use the uh, serial control registers or an a counter. So here I am going to set the a T mode to an a 20 wedge and I'm going to take an a three letters how many letters if you are going to take such type of a numbers you need to if you're going to take an fi you need to consider as an five if you are going to take an 10 you can take it but I'm going to control the counters up to the 50 values I can going to control the values counting up to the a 50 value here I'm going to set the tr0 so once the tr0 is set I move the value of an a letter c to the a and I will call the transfer that is a trans, uh, transmit program so that will be moved to the s sub that is the buffer s sub serial buffer and again that will be keep on and again i will go i'm going to be check whether it has been equals to uh, that is not equal to one or not if it is an equal to one then what will happen it will be returned to the program so until unless it is not equal to 1, again it is going to jump here. So obvious it will be equal to 1 because the value will be stored here, hence it will be equal to 1 and it will return to the next. So which is the next letter? The move A. Then it will call to an A trans. Again the S will be gets buffered. And again it will be equals to 1. And again it will return. And again the P will be stored. And again. So this will be repeated how many letters you have been done. And this is going to be monitored by an a serial analyzer. So in the next sessions, I'm going to show a practically the same program how to uh, see the output of an a serial. So thank you, one and all. So if you have any doubts, please do the comment. So we'll clarify it. So in the next session. Let me discuss or let me give them a demo of how to see the output in a keel with respect to the delay as well as with respect to the serial programming. Thank you.